Hello everyone and welcome to Best Side Cycling. Today is super exciting. It's my final ride here in Hong Kong. And I'm here with Sally and Zheng Zheng and we're gonna go up the tallest peak, Tai Mo Shan, at uh, 3,000 feet. So let's go. We're starting out here in Sun Wan West and we're on the cycle track heading towards the big mountain. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be my final ride here in Hong Kong. And so I've been here just about a month, but I've been eyeing this ride don't know if I have all the best gears for it, but we'll make it work today. So I wanted to take some time to introduce the route that we'll be doing today. We're basically following this Strava segment called Seung Bo Bo, which translates into basically ball climb. And the reason why that is, is because at the very top of Tai Mo San is a weather station and there's this big white sphere. So yeah, that's how they call this climb endearingly, but it is not an easy climb with a distance of 8.15 miles and 3000 feet of elevation. There's lots of parts that are pretty steep. The route that we're taking today is actually probably one of the slightly more gentle ways that you can get up this hill. So right now we're basically taking some side roads till we can get to Route Twisk, which is one of the main mountain passes leading up to Tai Mo San. So the story of today is really going to be how am I gearing and will I survive this climb. So the short story is so far is that I got a P-line and it came with the 50T and 4 speeds and it really is not designed for you to climb up many hills. So in effort to really make it more of a climber, I have changed out the change ring to 44T and now the gradients begin. These gradients go straight into the teens so definitely I'm already up and puffing and we'll see how this goes. Okay. Definitely huge props to Sang Sang who just gave me some directions. Uh, it was really helpful just having a local to take you up here and yeah he's on his Brompton and you'll hear more from him later but he rides this literally all the time so it's pretty cool. I'm beginning to get a little scared. I mean, with the 44T, this is a lot better than before, but this is equivalent to my third gear, third lowest gear on the road bike, a 3427. So it's definitely not my ideal, but I think with some rest and determination, we'll be able to get up on top. So all we can do is just keep rolling for now. So they told us me to wait here for them. And then we'll keep going up together, but yeah, it's uh, it's gonna, gonna be no slouch. We're only a little bit of the way up, but still tons to go, and it's uh, gonna be pretty warm. But I think by the time we get to the top, it's gonna be cold again and super foggy. So tons of fun coming up this mountain with locals and they explained to me all these did you know facts. I grew up in Vancouver BC to a Hong Kong immigrant family so definitely movies is where I'm gonna catch a lot of these, these pop cultures and things but yeah. Uh, this is a nice little ride with some awesome views of below, but it's going to get a lot more grand as we head up over to the mountain road. This is the road that we're going to be climbing up to a lot of the ways. So we're waiting here for the group and then we're going to keep on going. So this is one of the main roads we'll be taking till we get to the intersection letting us go in towards the Taimosan Park. I looked this uh, road up on Wikipedia just for fun and its description was that this is a torturous and steep dual lane road. Um, I think most of that description is correct but yeah this part is definitely just sort of a slog. The whole thing I think for this section averages about 7% gradient but there is of course some sections that definitely are just steady in the 9 to 10% and the other parts a little gentler but it's gonna be like this. And just really a word of caution is, yeah, you don't see a shoulder here, but so definitely stay to the left. As the culture here in terms of driving and movement is that the bigger you are, the more right of way you have. And there tends to be a lot of lorries and other trucks around. So definitely just pay note of that. But obviously they're not going to just run you over, but you just got to stay, stay heads up with the heads up. But yeah, this trip has been pretty awesome so far. Seen so much different sights of Hong Kong. And <laughs> just like a stage race, I'm so happy that my final ride is a mountain climb. 
descending this later will be interesting because I've never actually I haven't really descended too many long mountain passes and this time it'll be the very first on the Brompton see that ball in the distance up there I think that's our destination so at least we can see where we're heading towards so we're entering some 10% gradients now so as I get onto the struggle bus here, if you've been enjoying this video, please roll the like button and subscribe. I actually still have a lot of Hong Kong footage and just a lot of backlog of Brompton sort of content. So definitely look out for that, especially for my season. Um, I'm going to be riding my Brompton a lot, preparing for my trip to Vancouver. So definitely just want to show what this bike is really capable of. So really excited about that. And yeah, let's keep on rolling. We made it to the sign. So this is where you turn in to go to the more sort of actual country park part where I think there's uh, yeah more narrow roads, but the actual views begin. So I'm really excited. And we're gonna wait for the two friends that are behind me over here by the sign. for them around here oh yeah oh yeah my legs are fatiguing a bit but at least I get a break yeah one shot with this gearing I have to I have to practice but uh, just going up slowly but surely I think we'll make it approaching the visitor center now and then we're gonna regroup and go on the rest of the way but the road definitely narrows up up here and we made it here so far. Not bad at all. So we'll see what's here. All right, so we're here at the refreshment kiosk, and yeah, uh, there's this really nice lady and offering some well blessings here as you continue <laughs> heading so up. So yeah, we're riding together with Sally and Sing Sing. Uh, all well wishes, healthy, going up uh, successfully to Taimosan. So let's keep going. So from here, you're already over halfway in terms of elevation gain. I think there's about 1300 feet left to reach the very top that you can ride to. And yeah, the rest of the ride basically looks like this. There's going to be a lot less cars, but as you can tell, it's sort of like the split lane thing. So basically, you definitely need to watch out for cars coming up or down, but there's not going to be very many. And uh, they do have a good habit of like honking as they're doing some of these corners. So they're really well aware that there are a lot of cyclists, but definitely watch out. And then the other thing really to say about this next section is that really it is going to get pretty, pretty steep. So... Um, the next mile or so until we reach the next real checkpoint is going to average a whole 10.6% gradient. So uh, this is where it's clearly going to hurt and let's see how I fare. Steady 13%. This climb is cruel. So I think you get the point that um, basically, yeah, this section is steep and it's definitely drawing out all my reserves. The lesson that I've learned here in Hong Kong definitely is that my legs also have a strong limit. I'm really used to riding with compact gearing, so usually what goes first isn't quite my legs, but uh, from the Buddha ride to this, I'm finding that there actually is a limit, but I'm really thankful that I'm able to able spin my legs at all, but you can tell I'm having a really difficult time. I usually like to ride up climbs, even the steep ones at like 80, 80 RPM, but what I'm doing now, it looks probably more like 40 and felt like 30, but yeah, so, uh, and then I'm also zigzagging my way up, but nonetheless, getting through it, and uh, yeah, I make it over to some campgrounds where there's a bit of views. <laughs> Oh. The camping sites. All right, just a first look in terms of how far we've gone. Cardio-wise, I'm okay, but these gears are so heavy for this long climb. 2,000 feet in, hopefully two-thirds of the way there. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh well. I might just run up this wheel just to save some leg power.
So uh, during my time in Hong Kong, I definitely used my extra chain ring a lot. That is walking. It's surprisingly so much easier versus yeah, just grinding on the gears. So definitely this just underscores how important gearing is, but also that really there is no shame in walking. Uh, but yeah, I think this is basically the steepest parts left of the ride and it's going to get a lot better from here So I'm able to get back on my bike, but my legs are toast. So uh, We'll walk for a bit more and then keep riding up Here at another notable checkpoint, there's this little gate here and then uh, past here, I think uh, you just keep on going up, but that's where you reach and eventually reach to the end where it's like those two balls up there and then I don't think you can go any further. But yeah, definitely really interesting views. I'll see now waiting for them and hopefully my legs uh, will come back to me uh, and be able to push some tougher gradients again. Well, <laughs> <笑><笑><笑> so definitely big props to Sang Sang for bringing me up here today and just having good conversations. Definitely, I felt the overwhelming hospitality of other cyclists in Hong Kong. I think there's just a strong sense of camaraderie just because the whole overall environment conditions aren't super conducive to cycling overall. They do have uh, some good cycle tracks in the new territories and things, but if you're trying to ride around in uh, sort of Kowloon or main Hong Kong Island, it's going to be a pretty tough barrier entry and I think there's just yeah a lot of people that recognize that so when they can see fellow sort of riding mates it's pretty rare and it's pretty fun but now uh, talking about the climb again it's uh, definitely mellowed out a lot more uh, my legs are starting to feel better as we're getting to the final switchback so I'm gonna jump up ahead here and just crank the rest of this climb out and you can see our couple friends riding down there they've been super great my tour guides for today showing all the best photo taking spots and everything and I'm recording them right now <laughs> go 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 we're pretty much there to the top I think just another 400 feet to go but look at these views man lots of people hiking up the whole city over there I don't even know where that is but it's beautiful looking at it up from right up here um, and then we'll wait and see what waits us right at the top over there let's keep on rolling Got a bit more juice in the legs, and we'll see. Oh yeah, now I'm really understanding the concept of lactic acid in the legs, and why gearing is so, so important for long climbs. Yep, but it's worth it. I'm not here for a KOM or time, I'm just here to make it to the top. So, let's keep on rolling. Ooh. Definitely at this point I feel top of the world right now as you can just see the expansive views all around. Definitely the weather changed really fast as in the morning it was super foggy but it cleared right up and it's really noticeable so definitely um, yeah if you do ever come here just pay attention to some of the weather reports because it can get changed pretty quickly and also get pretty bad pretty quickly up here. But yeah, what I really found fascinating about this top part is like these sort of switchbacks right here. They're like I've never gotten the chance to ride in Europe, so this is like the closest thing I can uh, sort of surmise or have experienced to sort of having those like quite tight sort of hairpins. And yeah, so definitely it's not super steep here, but yeah, just riding through this type of course uh, with just barely any cars. I think the only cars that come up here might be some like government vehicles that need to access the weather station. So 
yeah it's really good on these sort of nice days but we're super close to the finish maybe only 200 feet of elevation left so let's go to the final approach so as you can sort of tell as we've gotten climbed over 3,000 feet in elevation it gets super windy up here and i noticed a wild bovine right near the end of this ride and yeah apparently these are very very common uh, all throughout uh, this sort of nature landscape just like a ton of wild cows so that's definitely something to watch out for if you are descending and also reminds me of like GCN side Richardson and his fear of cows so here's a close-up of it it's a pretty big beast um, but yeah very chill just eating grass but um, coming back now we are actually at the very end so the gate right here is basically as far as you get to go please do not go into the gate as you are not permitted there but the climb sort of almost unceremoniously ends here but you have the two giant balls right in front of you as you finish your ride so we made it up to the top Woohoo! you can see the meteorology sites here one and I think two over there uh, this open area should be prohibited and I've seen other people <laughs> with the gate usually closed so not gonna attempt with that but yeah we made it more or most of the way but just a bit of walking and sure enough uh, enjoying the beautiful day final ride in here in Hong Kong gonna wait for the others then I'm sure I'm gonna fear for my life descending down this thing on the Brompton but I'm sure to make it nice and easy I will get down just fine so Let's wait and roll. We just descended a little bit to come to this awesome viewpoint, but also with these really cute murals. So there's one of a cat. I think there's that, like a mouse looking thing. And yeah, you just see it all around us. And I think that's Shek Kong over there, another airport, but just beautiful views today. And yeah, just look at it and take it all in. So here's a map of more or less where the spot is. It's basically descending down the other way after you make it to the full top maybe about 150 feet or so but it's definitely well worth it for those few pictures and this view but anyway we're gonna head back all the way where we just were to get ready to descend the mountain so that about wraps it up so let's go get ready get go down the mountain uh we're gonna do it in a few chunks so i'm sure it'll be pretty fine probably gonna lower the seat just a little bit and then take it easy but we'll show you how it looks on the way down with the GoPro. So sort of fun fact is that I've never descended a mountain prior to this current ride. Um, I've ridden things like Sunrise where it's about like 3,000 feet of elevation but I never descended them as I always got picked up at the top and driven down and also same with Hurricane Ridge. So yeah, um, this will be my first time going through these corners and things like that and surprisingly with the Brompton actually I felt really really comfortable. Uh, there's several reasons for that uh, you would think quite the opposite when it comes to maybe like a smaller bike and smaller wheels but what I found actually is that uh, one uh, because of the smaller wheels the uh, general term terminal velocity of the bike is not nearly as high so you actually don't go down nearly as fast and then the number two because of the smaller wheels the turning radius is a lot lot uh, tighter so to me where my only fear is really of corners not so much of speed um, this is a lot more comfortable. I know it's shaking a lot that my current camera setup isn't go that, that well, but I'm actually feeling pretty good. Um, but yeah, the only downsides I would say so far, in terms of brake braking, it is rim brake. So um, Brompton's uh, in the rain, probably you'll have to uh, account for that. But in the dry, actually, the stopping power of these rim brakes are surprisingly very, very good. I think it's also due to the fact that it's smaller wheels so definitely I think there is like proportional force there that makes it feel like it has a lot more stopping power but otherwise yeah right now we're sort of chilling behind uh, as we're just sort of taking it easy down this hill and yeah what comes next is a bit of a shocker so I'm just gonna let it play out. Okay. Oh, All right, so just so it happened, it was we're descending. Uh, we're, I was going, for, I was breaking pretty hard because there's someone right in front of me, and then uh, I blew a flat. So uh, knew right away uh, it was pretty safe. But yeah, this is how my 
Hong Kong riding is gonna end. But for now, I think I'm just gonna stop here, call an Uber to a bike shop, and then head home. But it's okay. We, the fun part has been done, and uh, I was feeling pretty good on the corners actually. Uh, but uh, maybe if I just went for it myself, it would have been fine. But it's all good. Alright, let's keep rolling though. So now we're enjoying some food here. We have some tofu pudding and uh, siu mai. And then, uh, yeah, learning two things today. One, promptids are awesome. But two, also that, uh, yeah, watch out for the <laughs> rim brake heat and all that. And breaking too much on the on the downhills. But since I have a Brompton, it's going to be really easy to bring back home. So that somehow ends my trip. And ironically, so let's <laughs> eat and then go head home. Best side cycling from the future here. Got my bike fixed. Turns out it was just a spoke that was pointing out into the inner tube. But yeah, I got it fixed and I'll see you all in the next video.